All right, so we're leaving the house and we're gonna head down the highway to 13 Crossings. As you can probably guess from the name, it's a river hike where you cross back and forth over the river a bunch. I've been told that it's even more than 13 Crossings, but I guess it all depends on how many times you decide to cross. So I think we got decent weather. We'll see how it goes. It's probably gonna be pretty wet. Exactly three minutes to get here. When Laura and I first met 10 years ago, we weren't hikers, which is strange because we were both born and raised in the Pacific Northwest where hiking is basically a cult, if not a full-blown religion. We both really liked the concept of being outside, so hiking had always seemed like a solid idea, but for some reason, probably just laziness, we never mustered up the juice to get out there and actually go hiking together. We would do road trips, and every now and again we'd roll into a national or state park for some camping, but we never actually hopped on any trails. Sometime during 2014, we went on our first official hike together while on a trip up to Lonely Island in the North northeast corner of the San Juan Archipelago. The hike was called the Lummy Peak Trail. We wound our way up through a dense evergreen forest at a tortoise pace because we were both not prepared for the ass-kicking 1,600 feet of elevation gain. When we finally made our way to the top, the woods opened up to a legitimate vista with incredible views of the whole San Juan Islands. While that hike was neither one of our favorites, it was our first hike together, and it was the beginning of a new way for us to connect with each other outside. Since then, we've done a lot of hiking all over the world. Some of my favorites we've done so far are the Enchantments in the North Cascades, El Torcal in Southern Spain, Yosemite in Northern California, and all of the amazing Red Rock parks we've trekked around in Arizona and Utah. What's interesting is that in all of our hiking, we've never encountered such lush jungle, intense humidity, and shirt-drenching heat like we've experienced here in Maui. It's wild. Not wild like it's cool, but wild like it's really wild. So we're here, chilling in the middle of the river, taking some photos. Pretty dope location. Laura's decided she's just gonna jump right in the river instead of trying to walk across the slippery ass rocks. So, bit of advice. It's super muddy and super slick. Laura is super uncomfortable trying to jump across the rocks because they're so slick. So she's just walking through the water and I'm probably going to be doing the same thing myself here in a second. So be prepared to get your feet wet. It's going for it. think about it um while we were reading reviews for this hike one woman said it was the best hike that she's ever been on and that she broke her leg so to be careful yeah. and i can understand why she broke her leg uh when i was trying to be careful and not get wet crossing the river i felt like i was for sure gonna eat shit so making the decision just to step in the river and not care that my hiking boots are full of water. Definitely the way to go. Yep. One of the things I don't like about Maui is that no matter where you go out in nature, about every 10 minutes a helicopter flies by with a bunch of dudes in floral shirts up there in it. It's not very peaceful. Run! Go! Get to the chopper! 
got yelled at the other day for flying my drone at a park. I was like, there's been like a hundred helicopters have flown by. Why aren't you yelling at them? The 13 Crossings Trail is located in the West Maui Forest Reserve. Most guides say it's about a four mile round trip hike up to the falls, but there's several forks in the river if you're looking for ways to make the trip longer. The hike itself is pretty lightly trafficked, which is nice considering its neighboring hike, the Wahe'e Ridge Trail, can get pretty hectic some days. Since it's a likely trafficked hike though, the actual trail itself is often very narrow, so you'll be lightweight bushwhacking a bit and rubbing up against plenty of wet foliage as you slosh your way to the falls. One dope feature of this hike that's not often reported is the big bamboo forest that you get to hike through about midway through the trail. It does require a bit of scrambling and some decent bobbing and weaving to get through, but it's well worth it. Also, it's worth mentioning that the trail lies within an area of Maui that gets a ton of rainfall. Heavy rains upstream can mean flash floods that sweep down the river and take people out. It's a must that you check the weather before you do the hike and do not do the trail if there's heavy rains in the forecast. Trust me. This is pretty rad, I didn't know. I knew there was bamboo here, but I didn't know it was quite this badass. This is like a fall on bamboo forest. Thank you. Hey, no problem. Yeah, have a good one. The universe is an enormous place. In fact, it's quite literally infinite, or so the smart people say. So whatever strange series of events that landed you here watching Lucky Episode 13 of our show, I just want to say that it's pretty dope, and I want to say thank you for being here because you could literally be anywhere else in the entire infinite universe other than here, and yet, here we are. The show has been a long time coming for me. I first picked up a camera in middle school to film my friends and I shredding around in our skateboards. Those shitty skate videos were the first films that I ever created. As I grew up and got older, I never really stopped seeing things through the lens of that camera. I was always drawn to rad photography, films, and documentaries, but never really thought I could seriously do any of it since I had no equipment and no actual training. As life went on and I got more and more into music, I spent all of my creative energy making, playing, and listening to songs. After years of making music with my friends and traveling around playing shows all across the western United States, I finally picked up a camera again around 2010 to shoot some music stuff. It was a Canon T2i. Nothing fancy, but it was a great camera for me to relearn on with help from my buddy Joe. We made a couple silly music videos and it was a great learning experience for me. What really came out of me picking up that camera though was photography. I had never really used a camera for photography up until that point. It had always been a video camera or my mom's point and shoot in my hands. The only plus of spending eight hours a day driving in a van from show to show playing music with my friends is that I was able to learn that camera pretty quick. From then on I've been slowly getting better and better at both photography and videography. And over the past few years, I've turned my fun side project into a legit business. I've created content for a ton of different people, from musicians and bands, to small businesses, to engagement shoots. But mostly, what I get to do is lifestyle and product photography for a bunch of rad outdoor gear and clothing companies that I love. So, just like this hike, it's been a long and winding path to get here. And even though it's not over yet, it's always good to remember to stop and be stoked that we're here in the first place. Um, 
I was just walking behind Alex and I looked down and I was like, oh, that looks like ginger. Or I thought, that looks like ginger. And then I was like, wait a minute, that's probably ginger. So I stopped and I dug some up and it's ginger. And I was just wanting some ginger. Okay, I know it looks kind of whack, but look. Oh my God, it smells so good. I don't, I don't know. How do you harvest ginger, y'all? Okay. Fresh ginger. Cool. Okay, now my hands are super muddy. I'm really happy. So after consulting with some uh, other hikers, there's a river splits. It goes that way or it goes that way. And we know right up here it dead ends at a little waterfall. So we're going to go check that out. And then maybe we'll go check that out afterwards. We'll report back. To be honest, I never actually counted how many times we crossed a river, but I know for sure it was more than any other hike we've ever done. At this point in the trail, we're getting good and ready to see some waterfalls. Scrambling around all day on slippery rocks and muddy trail was starting to get a bit tiring, and we were ready for some payoff. On the last stretch, we actually ended up just walking in the river for a bit to avoid the messy trail. As we hopped over the river for the last time before the falls, the sound of the pounding water started to drown everything else out. <laughs> drown. So we turned the corner and the waterfall came into view. We both got super stoked and also pretty soaked. Since I'm basically a little boy at heart, I saw a trail leading up the side of the falls and I had to go and check it out. Once I got up to the top of the first rock, I saw some ropes dangling on the wall on the other side of the river and it looked like there was a way to climb up to the top of the falls. Again, little kid, so I of course climbed up that sketchy shit as well. Once I got all the way up there, I discovered that there was a big, beautiful, secluded pool up top with another huge waterfall up there as well. Unfortunately, I didn't get any of it on film because my batteries died on my GoPro and you can't really see it from down below. Climbing back down the wall was a bit sketchy, but it was nothing that I couldn't handle and everything turned out fine. Sorry for scaring you, mother. We just made it to the fork in the river um, and we went to the right because a couple people told us that there's a waterfall that you can't get to. So we walked up to it and Alex climbed up it um, and then found out that the SD card on the GoPro was full. So climbed back down. Now we're going to take the other fork and see about the other waterfall that's up that way and then decide which way we like better. All right, off we go. After taking a little break to refuel and drink some water, we decided that even though we we're already pretty tired and weren't sure what was at the end of the other fork in the river, we were going to go check it out anyways. The first fork and waterfall had gotten us pretty stoked and we didn't want to come back wondering what was back there. The last part of the trail was pretty much a free-for-all. The path was basically non-existent, and mostly we just traversed back and forth across the river, following whatever path seemed easiest. Luckily, it's pretty simple to navigate through though, no fear of getting lost. The whole thing runs through a canyon, so you basically just keep going forward and you're good.
about going back and I'm so glad that we came all the way because this is beautiful. We just wanted to do a little recap. We ran out of SD card on both cameras and so we couldn't really do a recap at the end. Uh, but yeah, it was an awesome hike. My takeaway is that it's fun. Um, try to go when it's in dry for a few days if possible. It's just kind of wet on this side of the mountains anyways, but it was really muddy. So be prepared to have muddy shoes get your feet wet. Once I kind of accepted that I was just gonna be in the water and be falling like a million times, then it, it went better. So, um, yeah. It would be very dangerous to try to like hop the rocks the whole time because they're so slick that you basically just, you're better off from the start just walking right through the water. It's way less dangerous and way more fun actually because then you can just like For sure. tromp right through all the all the crossings. So yeah, the only thing that's worth mentioning is the end of the hike like we showed you. It splits off uh, either side has a waterfall. If you have time, go to both like we did. And uh, if you only could go to one, I'd probably say go to the left. It's a bit cooler. It is a little bit longer though. So if you're really trying to get in and out, the one to the right is a little bit shorter. There are some mosquitoes, but it wasn't too bad. You are prone to getting bit. I might bring some bug spray. We got away without using any, but um, yeah, there definitely are some out there. Also, it's worth mentioning that uh, we drive by this hike uh, every day and it's like three minutes from our house and there's broken glass all over the ground and people definitely get their shit stolen there. Yeah. So don't leave anything in your car that you care about. If you're in a rental car, like a Jeep or a Mustang or, or the little like Nissan or Toyotas that are clearly rental cars, don't leave anything in there. Um, you will get your car broken into and yeah. you will get your shit stolen. Windows um, busted. So um, definitely don't do this hike with shit that you care about in your car. Leave it at the hotel or wherever you're staying. And um, yeah, if you can go midweek, midday, do it. We yeah. we got there at noon and we spent three or four hours on the trail. And yeah, we saw maybe four or five yeah. groups. And uh, yeah, everyone was super chill. So one couple did it with a baby strapped to the front. I would not recommend that. No. <laughs> it's so dangerous. I was like on hands and knees crawling. Like. I almost ate shit so many times. I think that's it. Uh, overall, great time. We got some really good photos there. It was great. It was pretty cool down in there. So if it was a really hot day, that'd be a great hike. Yeah. Thanks for checking it out. Thanks for watching. Uh, make sure to subscribe and drop some comments. Uh, if you have any questions or anything you want to know about the hike that we didn't answer, uh, leave a comment and we'll try to get back to you. And uh, yeah, thanks for checking it out. Peace out.